Hey, do you guys remember years ago, and I'm talking a couple decades ago, in the guitar magazine, Steve Vai had these, these really lengthy workout routines that were published. And they were, I think it was like a 15 or an 18 hour workout. And then there was another one, it was a 30 hour workout. And he's probably up to something like 10,000 hour workout at this point, knowing him. Um, and you probably remember some of them had like, it was like one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, or it was four, three, two, one. It was just all these different permutations of the numbers one, two, three, and four index, middle ring, and pinky. And I mean, me being a young kid, I practiced a lot of those, but then I found a bunch of them really were not practical for the kind of music that I was playing. So I created my own. So rather than use a bunch of useless fingerings that I'm not gonna use, I came up with a system and I'm gonna share them with you right now. The first one is what I call the one, three, five, meaning it's gonna go from the first, the third, the fifth fret. We're gonna go all the way across the neck until we get to the second string. And then I shift up a fret to kind of compensate for the tuning of the second string. Cause you know, the second string is tuned down a half step from the rest of the guitar. So once I get to that second string at two, four, six, I'll then continue that onto the first string. So that way I kind of have this, um, symmetrical pattern, at least to my ears, and I'm not doubling any of the notes. And it goes like this. Then I will move it up a fret and continue playing that pattern all the way up the neck. So now I'm starting at the second fret. Then I go to the third fret. I'll play that pattern as high up as I comfortably can on the fingerboard. And then when I get to the top of it, if I'm not completely exhausted at that point, I'll descend the pattern. Ah. I'll continue playing that pattern all the way down to the first fret again. Bro, I'm trying to make a video right now, you know, and you're bothering me. Oh, hey, sorry about that. All right, so here's the reason why I'm playing finger exercises lately. Um, back in May, I was involved in an auto accident and I was in just a, it's like a hit and run accident. It was pretty nasty. So I've been going to physical therapy. And at the same time, me and my wife were looking to buy a new home. So we finally found the home that we wanted and then we moved. So needless to say, that has put a big damper on my practicing ability, but enough about me. Let's talk about the next pattern. So the next pattern is what I call the one, three, four. And it goes like this. I'll keep playing that pattern all the way up the neck. And then when I get to the top of it, I'm gonna do like I did with the one, three, five, and I'm going to descend it all the way down. Now that was not a very good example of it. Now, because of the fret spacing on this one, I need to practice this one a lot more than I have been because I suck at it right now. Of course, as the frets open up a little bit more, I've got more room to squeeze my fat fingers in there. So it makes it a little bit easier. Up here though, oh man, I suck at them and I gotta practice them. All right, the next one is one, two, four, meaning first, second, and then fourth frets. Once again, 
remembering to shift up a fret when you get to the second string and to play that same fret spacing when you go over to the first string like this. So and when I get to the top, I'll just turn around and come back down. Now, because I struggle a little bit more in these upper frets lately, I'm gonna go a little bit slower on them. As, I, as the frets open up a little bit, I might start speeding them up. Ideally, I would practice these with a metronome at a relaxed tempo at first, something you can keep up with and not make any mistakes, and then gradually increase the tempo. If you struggle at a certain tempo, slow it down a little bit because you're trying to not make mistakes and make them as clean as possible, which obviously I'm not demonstrating very well today. Another one that I find useful sometimes is including string skipping. So I'm going to go back to the one, three, five pattern that I first showed you guys. And we're going to go from the sixth string to the fourth string. Then I come back to the fifth string. Then I go to the third, fourth string, shift up and string skip to the second string, shift back down to the third string shift up and skip over to the first string like this move it up a fret continue that pattern all the way up the neck and then descend the entire pattern all the way back down the neck. Now another little pattern I find useful is going from the third to the second string and compensating for the fact that the B string is down a half step and of course you have to shift up a fret for that. So on the third string, I'll play a fingering that uses the index, the middle, and the pinky. And then as I shift up to the second string a fret higher, I'm gonna use index ring and pinky like this. So on and so forth, get to the top as high as you can reach on the guitar, turn it around and descend all the way back down the hill. You're really only limited by your creativity and imagination on some of these. So I might find that if I ascend on one string, I'll descend on the next. So ascending, descending, alternating between each string. Um, and you'll find that sometimes some of those movements that you get yourself into are very beneficial movements that you would use on a regular basis. But if it's something you find that you're like, eh, I don't think I'm ever gonna need that, don't worry about it. If you've got your own creative finger exercises, I'd love to hear about those. And who knows, I might fall in love with them and start practicing them on the regular. All right, let me know what you guys thought. Drop those comments down below. Um, tell me about some of the finger patterns and exercises you've got that have helped you out, get your chops back and things like that. And don't forget to subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. Seems like a lot of you guys that watch and comment on these videos are not actually subscribers. So nothing can help my channel out more than you just subscribing and liking and possibly even sharing the videos. Till next time, keep rocking on. Okay.